गो फर् दस्ट क्वेश्चन नाइरेनल मूमेंट नाइरेनल मूमेंट रेस्पोन बै ऐनम इन उच्च रेट आफ् मूमेंट ईज रिटेड टू इंटनसीटी आफ लाइट ना एफेक्ट आफ लाइट आको मोशन एफेक्ट आफ लाइट आको मोशन अंडर दीस् वी हेव टू डिस्क वन वी काल इट ऐस फोटोटाक्सी वट ईज मेड बै फोटोटाक्सी द ओरएंटेड लोको मोटरी मूमेंट इट ईज क्लासीफाइड इन टू पॉजिटिव एंड नैगटिव वट ईज मेड बै पॉजिटिव फोटोटाक्सी द ऐनम मूव टूवर्स द लाइट वट ईज मेड बै पॉजिटिव फोटोटाक्सी द ऐनम मूव टूवर्स द लाइट दट ईज काल दॉजिटिव फोटोटाक्सी वन बेस्ट एग्जापल ईज युग्ली वट ईज मेड बै नैगटिव फोटोटाक्सी द ऐनम मूव एवे फ्रम द लाइट दट वी काल इट ऐज नैगटिव फोटोटाक्सी वट आर् दि एग्जापल फर् द नैगटिव फोटोटाक्सी वन ईज प्लनेरिया वन ईज एर्थवाम वन ईज काक्रोच वन ईज जू प्लांटा All these are come under the negative photodaxis, but here, what is the second one? That we call it as photokinesis. Here, what is the example for the photokinesis? Pino, teras, maculatus, maculatus. Now, as we observe this organism in its life history. The larva is present. Now here, the larva is blind. That means here there is no question of vision because the larva is blind. Though the larva is blind, depending upon the intensity of light, its speed of locomotion increases. Depending upon the intensity of light. As the speed of locomotion increases, that we call it as the photokinesis. Now here the question: Non-directional movements response shown by animals in which the rate of movement related to intensity of light. Now based on this information, what is the correct answer? The photokinesis. Now we go for the next question. The reproductive cycle in some polychaetes, like Palaloworm, its scientific name is Unisviridis, is related to phases of the moon, which is known as. And now, as we observe the Unis, it comes under the class Polychaeta. It is popularly known as the Pacific Palaloworm. Now, as we observe the unis life history, every year, every year, during October and November, in the last quarter of full moon day. As we observe the life history of Unis, it is popularly known as the Pacific Palaloworm. It comes under the class Polychaeta. Every year during October and November, in the last quarter of full moon day, that means not less than one minute, not more than one minute, exact midnight, twelve o'clock. Thousand and thousand units will come out of the burrows. They undergo copulation and release innumerable gametes every year during October and November. In the last quarter of full moon day, not less than one minute, not more than one minute, exact midnight twelve o'clock. Thousand and thousand units will come out of the burrows. Both male and female perform the nuptial flight. That means they perform copulation dance and release innumerable gametes and again enter into the burrows. That is an example for the lunar periodicity concerned with different phases of the moon. Such lunar periodicity 
is an example of circadian rhythm. Now here the question. The reproductive cycle in some polychids like Pelalovam is related to different phases of the moon which is known as the best example is the lunar periodicity. The lunar periodicity is come under the category of circadian rhythm. In the options, if circadian rhythm and lunar periodicity both are present, first you go for lunar periodicity. If lunar periodicity is not present in the options, you go for the circadian rhythm. Lunar periodicity is an example of circadian rhythm. Now we go for the next question. Assertion. Hamsters. The breeding cycle of both the sexes synchronize. The critical photo period is 12.5 hours for both male and the female hamsters. Now, as we observe the photo period, what is meant by photo period? Availability of light from sunrise to sunset. That is the 6 a.m. to the 6 p.m. This is the period in which the light is available. That we call it as the photo period. In the photo period, the animals shows some responses. The responses during the photo period, that we call it as the photo periodism. And now, what is the critical, C means critical, what is the critical photo period? 12.5 hours. We are having a good idea in the primary classes. As we observe at the equator, 12 hours day time and 12 hours night time. Day and night equal at the equator. Now, based on this information, what is the critical photo period time? That is 12.5 hours. Exact at this time, as we observe the male and female hamsters, at the critical photo period in male hamster, the testes release the sperms. In the female hamster, the ovaries release the ova. These both the reactions are synchronized, associated with what type of photo period time? That we call it as exact 12.5 hours. Now here the question. In hamsters, the breeding cycle of both sexes synchronize. That means correlated. Reason. The critical photo period is 12.5 hours for both male and the female. Exact at critical photo period. In both the sexes, the gametes release undergo fertilization. Based on this information, both are correct. Or he explains here. Now we go for the next question. Planarians. Now as we observe the planarians. The planarians come under the class Turbalaria. As we observe the phylum Platy elementis. In the phylum Platy elementis, one, one class we call it as Turbalaria. What is the common name of Turbalaria? Planarians. Now as we observe the planarians, majority, no doubt, the free living. No doubt all planarians are free living. In the class Turbalaria, majority are free living. Such free living Turbalarians technically called planarians. Now as we observe the planarians, they show negative response to strong intensity of light. That is negative. They are called the nocturnal. Now based on this information, planarians are the second option, negatively photodactic and free living flatworms. Now we go for the next question. Polaloworm or Pacific Polaloworm. 
exhibits the lunar periodicity already discussed. What is the scientific name of Palalovam that is Unisviridis that is an annelid come under which class the polyketa. Now here the answer is annelid. Now we go for the next question. Assertion. Light is entertainer. Reason. Because the light sets or resets the biological clocks. Now, as we observe the biological rhythms, biological rhythms, what are the biological rhythms? The biological activities occur at regular intervals with a specific time. Again, it is repeated. What are the biological rhythms? The regular occurrence of biological activities at regular intervals within a specific time. That we call it as biological rhythm. If biological rhythms associated with 24 hours of a day, that we call it as circadian rhythms circadian rhythms all circadian rhythms are biological rhythms but all biological rhythms are not circadian rhythms because circadian rhythms are biological rhythms associated with 24 hours of the day one example here is what is the best example for the circadian rhythm already we discussed the life cycle of unis every year in October and November, in the last quarter of full moon day, it releases more and more number of eggs. And what is the second example for the circadian rhythm? As we observe every day in the evening time, all birds flock on the trees and produces chirping noises. It is quite common. All birds every day in the evening time, all birds flock on the tree and produces chirping noises that is going on every day at a particular time that is circadian rhythm the circadian rhythms are nothing but the biological rhythms the biological rhythms are under the control of biological clocks what are the biological clocks nothing but the genes these biological clocks are nothing but the genes they are present in our body from the birth onwards. These biological clocks initiated or stopped by what type of physiological factor that we call it as the light. How the light enters into the body? The light enters into the body through eyes or the light enters into the body through skin. The light enters into the body, it stimulates the central nervous system. The central nervous system gives signals to the genes or biological clocks. Automatically, the rhythms may start or stop. So, here, light is entertainer. Reason, because it sets or resets the biological clocks. Both are correct or he explains A. Now we go for the next question. Assertion. Fruit flies emerges out at dawn from the pupae. Reason. Vital activities of certain animals occur precisely at the same time with a periodicity of a about 24 hours. Now, we already discussed this one. We call it as biological rhythms. What is meant by biological rhythm? The regular occurrence of biological activities. If biological rhythms associated with 24 hours of a day, that we call it as the circadian rhythm. Now here, one example is so for the circadian rhythm. As we observe the drosophila, the drosophila melanogaster, it is popularly known as the fruit fly. 
Now in its life history, what is present? The egg. Now the egg becomes the larva. The larva becomes the pupa. And now, as we observe the life history of Drosophila, every year in the life history of Drosophila, particularly yet to dawn. What is meant by dawn? The early hours of the day. In the life history of Drosophila, every year in the early hours of the day from the pupa, what will emerge out? The imago. What is the other name of imago? The adult. So that this is associated with 24 hours of the day. So it is nothing but the circadian rhythm. So that here the assertion in the life history of fruit flies, the fruit flies emerges out at dawn from the pupae. Reason, vital activities of certain animals occur precisely at the same time with a periodicity of about 24 hours of a day. So both are correct or explains A. Now we go for the next question. One of the following is not an example for negative phototaxis. What is meant by negative phototaxis? The animal moves away from the sunlight. That we call it as a negative phototaxis. Here cockroach, it exhibits negative phototaxis. Earthworm exhibits negative phototaxis. Planarian exhibits negative phototaxis. What about the euglena? Euglena moves towards the intensity of light. That we call it as phototaxis, positive phototaxis. Here the euglena does not exhibit the negative phototaxis. The remaining three are example of negative. Euglena is positive. Now we go for the next question. Dipause in insects and the development of gonads in the migratory birds are some responses to. Now as we observe the photo period. What is meant by photo period? The availability of light intensity from sunrise to sunset. Now, in this period, we are getting the light intensity. That is called the photo period. In the photo period, as we observe the birds, only in the photo period, from sunrise to sunset, the birds perform migration. In the migratory birds, the gonads mature. And in the photo period, some birds perform the reproduction. Now, in the photo period, as we observe the life history of insects, in the life history of insects, during the photo period, the development temporarily stops. That we call it as pause. In the tape recorder, one button is named as pause. What is meant by pause? If we press the pause, the song temporarily stops. Like that, in the life history of some insects, in the photo period, the development temporarily stops. That we call it as diapause. Now here, diapause in insects and development of gonads in the migratory birds are responses to the correct answer is the photo period. Now we go for the next question. Dysphotic zone in the ocean extends from a depth of depending upon the penetration of light intensity. This is a deep water body. Now this is a deep water body. Depending upon the depth of water body, the light intensity decreases. Depending upon the penetration of light intensity, the water body is broadly classified into three regions. One we call it as euphotic, one we call it as dysphotic, one we call it as aphotic. 
Now this is zero to eighty meters, and eighty to two hundred meters. Now the part of the water body between zero to eighty meters that we call it as U forty. In this, all colors of VGR are available. What about the dysphotic? It is extending between eighty to two hundred meters. Here. All colors of VGR are not available. Only few are available in the dysphotic zone. What is the best color available in the dysphotic zone? That we call it as the blue color. Beyond 200 meters, that we call it as aphotic. In this area, there is no availability of the light, and there is no availability of oxygen. Now, here the question is the dysphotic zone. In the ocean extends from a depth of eight and eighty to two hundred meters. Now we go for the next question. Match the following with the reference to cyclomorphosis. Now we go for the cyclomorphosis. What is meant by cyclomorphosis? Seasonally, again repeating, seasonally changes occur in the morphology. That we call it as cyclomorphosis. This was explained by a person called Cocker. With reference to one example is Daphnia. What is the common name of Daphnia? That is water flea. Now it is a zooplankton. It floats on the surface of water. Now this one we call it as winter season. The winter is followed by spring season. Now we are going to celebrate Telugu Ogadi on 11th of this month. That means the spring season is going to start. The spring is followed by the summer season. And it is followed by fall or autumn season. Now, as we observe the winter season, in the winter season the water is more cool, and the density of water is more. The arrow mark indicates more density. Now, in the winter season, as we observe the head of Daphnia, this is round in shape. Winter is followed by spring season. Slowly temperature increases. Now in the spring season, on the head of Daphnia, a small projection develops. The spring is followed by summer. In the summer season, the water is more warm, and the water has less dense. In the summer season. As we observe the projection, on the head the projection is in the form of helmet-like. Again in the fall season, the projection size decreases. Now in the winter season, again the head is round shape. Now as we observe the Daphnia seasonally in the morphology. We have to observe the changes. Because of these changes, the surface area increases. As the surface area increases, with the increasing surface area, the at uh, the Daphnia freely floats on the surface of water. So, what is the significance of cyclomorphosis? Free floating or buoyancy. Now, here. As we observe the winter season, in the winter season the head is round in shape. In the spring season a small projection. In the summer season that small projection becomes helmet-like. In the fall or autumn again the size decreases. Based on this information, what is the correct answer? The second option. Now we go for the next question. Choose the correct combinations from the following. 
Now, as we observe the Bergman's rule, according to the Bergman rule, according to the Bergman rule, cold regions and warm regions. Now, according to the Bergman, the Bergman rule is applicable to aves and mammals. Now, in the colder region, as according to the information of Bergman, in the colder region, the body size of animal is more. In the warmer region, the body size of animals is less. Here, the surface area is less. Here, the surface area is more. Now, surface area to body size is less. Here, surface area to body size is more. What is the surface area? The surface area is calculated based on number of bloody capillaries. If less number of bloody capillaries is present, surface area less. If more number of bloody capillaries is present, the surface area is more. Through the surface area, the heat comes out or goes out. So, according to the Bergman, the body size is large and surface area less in colder region. In the warmer regions, body size is less, but the surface area is more. Now, the first option, Bergman rule, effect of temperature on body surface to volume ratio of animals is correct. The example is bears. Now, the second one is Allen's rule. As we observe the Allen's rule, the Allen's rule is applicable to only for the mammals. Only for the mammals. According to the Allen, the tip of ear, the tip of nose, the tip of forelimb, the tip of hind limb, the tip of tail a fox. Here, the tips called extremities. What is the meaning of extremities? The tip. According to the Allen, as we observe the colder region and warmer region, in the colder region, extremities size small, surface area small. In the warmer region, extremities size more and surface area is more. The Allen's rule quite opposite to that of the Bergman's rule. Bergman explained he has taken entire body size, but Allen has taken only the tip of the snout, the tip of earlobe, the tip of fore and hind limbs and the tip of the tail. Now, Allen's rule, influence of temperature on the size of certain body parts of homeotherms. Here, what are the homeotherms? One example, mammals. Now, the third one, vent of rule, influences of temperature on sex ratio. According to the vent of, vent of rule applicable on metabolism. According to the vent of rule, for every 10 degrees rise of temperature, the, met the metabolic rate doubles or twofold or two. Again repeating, vent of rule applicable on the metabolism. According to the vent of, in the body of living organisms, for every 10 degrees rise of temperature, the rate of metabolism becomes two or double or twice. But here, vent of rule applicable to on sex ratio, that is incorrect. Now, what about the Jordan? According to the Jordan rule, the temperature effect on segmentation only in the early stages. Now, you have to observe the fourth option. Effect of temperature on segmentation during the development. If temperature less, segmentation more. 
if temperature more segmentation less he worked on what type of animals the larvae of cod fish so the first statement the second one the fourth one correct the incorrect one is the vent of rule is not applicable for the sex ratio it is applicable for the rate of metabolism now we go for the next question during summer stratification the upper warm water of a lake now here we have to discuss the summer stratification what is meant by stratification formation of layers now particularly in the temperate regions in the deep fresh water bodies during the summer season in the temperate regions as we observe the deep fresh water bodies now this is a deep fresh water body in the summer season because of the changes in the temperature we are going to get the formation of three layers this one we call it as epilimnion and this one we call it as metalimnion or thermocline and this one we call it as hypolimnion in the summer season epilimnion minimum temperature 21 degree centigrade in the summer season the temperature of epilimnion increases 22 23 24 25 now what is the maximum temperature of epilimnion 25 what is the difference the 4 degree centigrade in the summer season only in the epilimnion the water is warm in the summer season only in the epilimnion oxygen available only in the epilimnion the water circulates based on this information during summer stratification the upper warm water of a lake that we call it as epilimnion now we go for the next question went up rule cocker ellen's rule jordans again repeating went up rule applicable on metabolism according to the went up rule for every 10 degrees rise of temperature the rate of metabolism doubles or two folds or it increases twice second cocker cocker explained the cyclomorphosis with references to daphnia that is a water flea that is a zooplankton what about the ellen's rule according to the ellen's rule ellen's rule applicable to only mammals he explained the rule with reference to extremities of some parts of mammal's body but not the entire body part what about the jordan's rule he explained the effect of temperature on segmentation only during the early stages of the development based on this information went up now effect of temperature on metabolic rate cocker cyclomorphosis ellen's rule ellen's rule that is if effect of ellen's rule on size of extremities what about the jordan's rule the effect of temperature on the segmentation what about the pigmentation glogers rule according to the glogers those animals live in the tropical countries are more pigmented glogers rule applicable to the pigmentation now we go for the next question assertion winter stratification does not have significant effect on aquatic organisms a reason in winter in winter stagnation oxygen requirement is comparatively low as the metabolic rate is at slow rate 
now as we observe the winter stratification this is a deep fresh water body in the temperate region in the winter season this is a water body we explain only two layers now the water present in upper layers the water present in bottom layers in the winter season as we observe the water present in the upper layers in the winter season temperature slowly decreases 4 degrees 3 degrees 2 degrees 1 degree and 0 degrees in the winter season the temperature of water in the upper layers slowly decreases to 0 degree centigrade now in the upper layers the water becomes ice as we observe the water present in the bottom layers in the bottom layers this temperature is maintained in the winter season here the water is slightly warm here the rate of decomposition is less the rate of respiration is less so in the winter season in the bottom layers what is present the oxygen is available so in the winter season this bottom water is suitable for the aquatic life so the winter stagnation does not show much effect now assertion winter stratification does not have significant effect on the aquatic organisms reason in the winter stagnation oxygen requirement is comparatively low as the metabolic rate is at slow rate so in the bottom water the oxygen is available the bottom water is suitable for the aquatic life so the winter stagnation is not much effect on aquatic organisms both are correct or he explains here now we go for the next question now the list one marine cartilage fishes sponges thorny devil and sea gulls now the list two gemmules hygroscopic skin salty fluid and tmo and cladoic eggs where we have to discuss these points with reference to water now we discuss marine cartilage fishes the cartilage fishes exclusively live in marine water in order to maintain osmoregulation some amount of urea and tmo mixed with blood plasma of cartilage fishes so that marine cartilaginous fishes associated with tmo what about the sponges during summer season as we observe the fresh water sponges whenever the fresh water dries up the fresh water sponges perform asexual reproduction by internal buds the internal buds are called gemmules now sponges associated with gemmules what about the thorny devil that is nothing but molacaridas in the molacaridas the skin is hygroscopic what is meant by hygroscopic with the help of skin it absorbs water the skin prevents the loss of water even in the frog body the skin is hygroscopic the frog never drinks water with the help of skin it absorbs water now thorny devil associated with hygroscopic skin what about the sea gulls in the body of sea gulls what are present salt glands whenever the sea gull collects the food materials along with the food material marine water enters into the body so in the body the salt concentration increases excess salts eliminated by salt glands in the penguin and in the sea gulls the salt glands open near the nasal cavities based on this information 
the correct answer is 1. Now we move for the next question. Fishes like eels and some birds exhibit. Now, as we observe the eel, it, its scientific name is Angula. Now, it is a freshwater fish, Commander Teleostei. Now, eel, the scientific name is Angula. During the breeding season, it moves from fresh water to the marine water. The movement of organism from fresh water to marine water, that is called catadromous migration. Whenever the angula moves from fresh water to marine water, during breeding season. Now here, fishes like eels and some birds, now as we observe the Siberian birds, during the breeding season, they migrate from Siberia to some places of India. Now, fishes like Angola and migratory birds, whenever they exhibit the migration, particularly during the breeding season. Now, the first option is the seasonal migration. Here, what is the season? That is the breeding season. Now, we go for the next question. The following adaptation is observed in the aquatic animals which are subjected to exosmosis. Now, this is the marine water. This is marine water. We know very well in the marine water, the salinity is more. The arrow mark indicates in the marine water, the salinity is more. Now, in the marine water, this is one organism. Now, as we observe the body fluids, the concentration of body fluids of marine organism is less. So that in the marine organisms, from the low concentration to high concentration, the water comes out. That process we call it as X osmosis. X osmosis. Now, as we observe the marine water organisms, what is their problem? X osmosis. Because of the X osmosis from the body, the water continuously comes out. If water loses from the body, the animal suffers from dehydration. Ultimately, it dies. How? These organisms avoid the exosmosis. In order to avoid exosmosis, what type of adaptations? One is a glomerular kidney. And the second one is the chloride cells. The chloride cells eliminate, eliminate the salts. And the third one, because of the exosmosis, the water comes out of the body to compensate the marine bony fishes drink more and more marine water. So, here you have to observe. The following adaptation is observed in the aquatic animals which are subjected to exosmosis. Chloride cells associated with absorption of salts. But in these animals, chloride cells eliminate the salts. So, first option is not an adaptation. They undergo estivation. Marine animals do not undergo estivation because marine water does not dry up. Second is not adaptation. Third, a well adapted glomerular kidney. But in these animals, what type of kidney? A glomerular. So, third is not the adaptation. Only the fourth one. Because of the excess masses, the marine water comes out of the body. That means the water comes out of the body to compensate the marine bony fishes drink more and more marine water that is one adaptation so the fourth is correct we have to discuss the remaining questions in the next class